Hey, welcome to this episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. We're just jumping all over the place with these BJCP style guidelines now that we finished all the classic category examples. So let's try a, a wild beer. Uh, let's try style 28A, Brett Beer. Overall impression, most often drier and fruitier than the base style suggests. Funky notes range from low to high depending on the age of the beer and the strain of Brett used. Funkiness is generally restrained in, 100, in younger 100% bread examples, but tends to increase with age. May possess a light acidity that does not come from Brett. And to exemplify this style, I get a beer that says Brett right on the label there. In fact, this brewery is known for making a lot of wild beers. Crooked Stave, Hop Savant, Britannomyces IPA. Uh, so let's check out the comments history all stuff. It's actually quite long, but... Um, let's go straight. Let's go on to characters and ingredients, which I think this should be the overall impression. Uh, virtually any style of beer fermented in any manner, then finished with one or more strains of Brett. Alternatively, a beer made with Brett as a sole fermentation strain. Compared to the same beer style without Brett, a Brett beer will be drier, more highly attenuated, fruitier, lighter in body, and slightly funkier as it ages. Less sourness and depth than a Belgian wild ale. Yeah, because Brett is not sour. That's your lacto and your pediococcus and some other um, bacteria. Brett is wild, so it's like more dry. And what, what they, they, BJCP keeps using this word funky, and I it's just kind of a catch all term because it's really hard to like, it's a je ne sais quoi thing of what Brett tastes and smells like, but you know it when you taste it and smell it. So, anyways, um, I guess that's enough for that. Let's just start diving right into the review here. So, let's give this thing a whiff. Wow. I mean, this is an IPA, but this can's actually kind of old, but it still has this remarkably strong uh, citrus, uh, especially lemony, lemony smell, but it, I can smell that Brett in there. A little bit of like a, a, you know, horse blanket, barnyard, whatever you want to call it, but there, the whatever that lemon is, I don't know if it's just like if they put like a ton of, um, you know, hops in there, but. Uh, so just big lemon, almost like lemon peel, lemon grass, something like that. A little bit of uh, Brett in the background. It is adding like a like a little bit of funkiness. It's like it's you know the hops are up here and the Brett's down here, but it's enough to you know to notice. Um, as far as like the base malt, it, it, it's funny. It actually kind of smells like a New England IPA, just with all that lemon and kind of a tropical thing there, but. Yeah, so I mean, it definitely does smell like an IPA, and the Brett is subtle, which is it's kind of strange because it's kind of an old can. I thought it'd be a little bit stronger than that by now, but yeah, so it's an IPA with Brett, and it definitely smells like it. So let's check the specs on aroma. Variable by base style, young Brett fermented beers will possess more fruity notes, but this is variable by the strain of Brett used. So I don't know which specific strain of Brett they use in here. For 100% Brett beers heavily hopped with American hop varieties, the fermentation dry flavors are often difficult to tease to tease from the hop aromatics. Older 100% Brett beers may start to develop a little funk, i.e. barnyard wet hay or slightly earthy or smoky notes, but this character should not dominate. Absolutely true. If the beer is fermented with brewer's yeast in addition to Brett, some of the character of the primary yeast may remain. A faint sourness is acceptable, but should not be a primary character. I'm not getting sourness on I here. think I'm gonna go 10 out of 12 on this one. Appearance, well, I mean, it kinda looks like a New England IPA. This one's a little bit more pale orange on your average you know it's fairly hazy <laughs> actually yeah it's i wouldn't go as far as to say completely opaque but yeah it's about a four to five srm the foam did come up to the rim when i first poured it but you know it takes me 20 takes to get this video going there so yeah i mean it looks like an, an, an ipa for sure a little bit hazier than i prefer but Whatever. Appearance, variable by base style. Clarity can be variable and depends on the base style and ingredients used. Some haze is not necessarily a fault. I see no reason to give it anything less than a 3 out of 3, do you? Let me know in the comments. All right, flavor. What do we got going on here? Cheers. Same thing with the aroma. Just a big lemon and kind of a tropical fruit taste. Like a little bit of like your yeah, passion fruit, guava, mango, those kind of things. So that bread, it comes out on the finish. Once it hits the apex there, you get this... This, uh, I'd say moderate tartness. It's, you know, so it's tart, like the, the funkiness to it. But you also have those American or, you know, New World hops in there, giving it the, the citrus and the tropical fruity flavor. The actual bitterness is, is rather low, which again makes me think that this is a New England style IPA done with Brett or something in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. 
just the the wild character in there is it's you know it's a wild beer but the wildness is actually kind of tame on here so the brett is more of a subtle kind of a thing just kind of like a bonus flavor in fact i, I guess the best way to describe this beer would be a new england ipa with just like a bonus kind of brett flavor to it let's talk about base malt and all that so base malt is you know fairly nondescript just you know your generic uh, two row no toasty notes i don't think there's wheat in here maybe like a touch of it i am not getting any cracker or bread or bready quality nothing like that i'm just getting like i mean the hops and the bread are the stars of the show here the malt is just like for lack of a better word the backbone let's check the specs on flavor variable by base style brett character may range from minimal to aggressive can be fruity Tropical fruit, yeah, I mean, there you go. And have, or have some smoky, earthy, or barnyard character. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely fruity, although how, how much of that is from the brat and how much of that is from the hops, I'm not sure. Should not be unpleasantly funky, such as Band-Aid, Fetid, nail polish remover, cheese, etc. I mean, it's definitely not. Light sourness is acceptable with the beer being lightly tart, but should not be truly sour. That's, that's an absolute true statement. Always fruitier when young, gaining more funk with age may not be aesthetic or sorry aesthetic or lactic that means you know sour malt flavors are often less pronounced than in the base style leaving a beer most often dry and crisp due to high attenuation by the brett i'm gonna go kind of high on this one i'm gonna say 16. i wonder what it would be like when it's fresh mouthfeel I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a light bodied beer, but it's awfully close. It's like, it's definitely medium light. Um, carbonation's moderately high, I guess. So it, it does feel a little thin and, you know, a little, you know, effervescent, a little crispy, very smooth. 6.7% uh, ABV. This is drinking to me like a 5% beer, which I, I think I'm going to penalize it for that because six, you know, almost 7%. It should be a little bit stronger. I mean, there's no alcohol or anything in there, but it just, doesn't really like have that boldness that you would want like in a stronger beer. This is very, very sessionable to me, especially in the warmer months. Um, so the drinkability on it is very high and the tartness is, is quite tame. I'd actually kind of prefer that more, you know, Belgian-y barnyard, just, you know, lingering kind of a uh, Brett kind of thing. But, um, you know, so drinkability on this is nice. It's just that it doesn't drink like a Brett beer exactly. Let's see what the specs have to say about that. Mouthfeel, variable by base style. Generally a light body, lighter than what might be expected from the base style, but an overall thin body is a fault. Okay, so all right, that explains some things. Generally moderate to high carbonation. Head retention is variable. I don't know why they put that in her mouthfeel. Shouldn't they put it in her appearance? Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's kind of on point there, but not exactly. I'm kind of torn between a three and a five on this. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go three out of five. I mean, it is a thin body, but it says it should be, but I, also the fact that it's 6.7 and it drinks like a very sessionable beer, uh, overall impression. I could kind of go seven or eight on this. Let's say, let's say eight. Let's still score 40 out of 50. Wow. I mean, that's, that's a really good score. Um, I think that's a, like a tad high. Um, cause to me, this isn't like a fantastic Brett beer. I mean, on the aroma, it's right there, the appearance, yeah, but I think I'm going to drop the flavor down to a 14, and I'm going to drop the overall impression down to a 7. Uh, that's a total score of 37 out of 50, which I think I think that's more accurate. I don't think, I mean, 7 is definitely good, solid, you know, everything. I don't want to say average, but, you know, once you get 8, 9, 10s, you're like in like those really, really good beers, and I don't think this is a fantastic uh brett ipa exactly but it's also that it's a little old and everything so i don't know all right so 37 out of 50 for crooked stave hop savant brett tanomyces ipa um if i can get this fresh i'll try to re-review it but i mean i think this is still doing the the uh, style pretty good justice so all right i'm going very long as usual thanks for watching you're awesome cheers Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. <laughs> <laughs>